Hi, and welcome to Season 2 of That's Roddy Mysterious, a podcast of short tales about true mysteries. What created the Potomsky Crater? Who was involved in the 1963 Great Train Robbery? I'm not going to solve those mysteries, but they'll be interesting to learn about. I'm your host, Kelly with an I. Transcripts and references for all episodes can be found at thatsruddymysterious.wordpress.com. No apostrophe and no exclamation point. Today's tale is about the P.Oxy.87.5575. P.Oxy.87.5575 is a papyrus found near Oxyrhynchus, today known as El Banasa, Egypt. It's interesting to biblical scholars because it contains non-canonical information about Jesus. It's the earliest example of mixing together biblical material as is done in the existing Gospels. Oxyrhynchus was located in the Minya Governorate in Upper Egypt. It was about 160 kilometers or 99 miles south of Cairo. It was located along the Canal of Joseph, which is a branch of the Nile River to the west of the main river. For over a millennium, people who lived in the city threw their trash out in the desert surrounding the city including papyri that people didn't want, and that's where the Oxyrhynchus papyri were found. Papyrus is a durable medium. It lasts up to 2,000 years. It was also inexpensive to produce. The Oxyrhynchus papyri was a collection of papyri that was excavated between 1897 and the early 1900s. It was found by a team led by Bernard Grenfell and Arthur Hunt. The excavation site was an ancient trash dump where both public and private documents were discarded. The papyri contains texts that people no longer wanted. The Oxyrhynchus papyri are one of the most important discoveries of a manuscript ever made. They contain literature not known to have survived elsewhere. They also include texts that show everyday life in Egypt, Greece, and Rome. The papyri also contain the largest store of early Christian manuscripts ever found so far. On January 11, 1897, a piece of papyrus from the Gospel of Thomas was found. Then a piece from the Gospel of Matthew was found. Within three months, archaeologists had found enough papyri to fill 280 boxes. Not all of the papyri found were of a Christian nature, however. Some of the papyri contained magical spells. One spell calls upon the gods to make a woman fall in love. Another spell was written to enslave a man. Some of the papyri contained mundane, everyday things like grocery lists, official records, and personal letters. Some were even related to business contracts. Some of the papyri also contained a satire play by Sophocles and poetry by Sappho. The languages of the writing include Greek, Latin, Demotic, Coptic, and Arabic, and some of the papyri is still being translated. The Gospel of Thomas is a non-canonical gospel. This means it's not a sanctioned part of the Bible. It contains 114 sayings that were attributed to Jesus' resurrection. It was written in the middle of the 2nd century AD and has no mythic narrative, just a series of sayings attributed to Jesus. A number of these sayings closely parallel those found in the New Testament Gospels. Some scientists say that it is among the oldest witnesses to Jesus' word. It was tied to the Christian movement of the 2nd century CE. The Gospel of Thomas discussed the redemptive power of complex knowledge received by studying divine revelation. Clergy in the 2nd to 4th centuries claimed it to be heretical because it included both sayings of Jesus and mystical sayings, and it was excluded from the Bible. There were some connections between Thomas's view and St. Paul's, but not a lot. Although some of the sayings have been attributed to Jesus, there's no proof they actually originated with him. The Gospel of Thomas was believed to have been lost to time until it was found in 1945. The New Testament is not based on a single manuscript of original Greek, but rather on multiple manuscripts. The manuscripts that survive today contain the entire Christian Bible. Those manuscripts are the work of medieval monks. 
The oldest surviving examples of the New Testament are fragments of papyri mostly excavated from Egypt. How old are those papyri? First, it must be determined what is being dated. Is it the ink used to write the text, the paper used, or the manuscript itself? Most scholars want the entire manuscript dated. Radiocarbon dating has been done on the ink and paper used to write the New Testament. Radiocarbon dating can accurately determine the age of carbon-based items up to 60,000 years. Radiocarbon dating relies on counting the amount of carbon-14 isotope that is left in organic material. The Oxyrhynchus papyri dates from between the 3rd century BC to 640 AD. It includes almost 500,000 troves of papyri. The p.oxy.87.5575 comes from this trove. Brent Nongbri is a biblical scholar. He said the 5575 manuscript is a fragment that contains non-canonical information about Jesus. He said that if the dating of the text is accurate, then it is older than most surviving original copies of the New Testament. The manuscript uses material from the Gospel of Matthew, Luke, and Thomas, but with a few new words. This could have been the oldest known text related to the Bible, but the inclusion of Thomas leads to some questions. The Gospel of Thomas is about early Christianity, but it disappeared and then reappeared in the mid-1940s. The 5575 manuscript indicates that the Gospel of Thomas was every bit as canonical as the other New Testament Gospels. If radiocarbon dating of p.oxy.87.5575 is correct, it is the earliest surviving manuscript about sayings associated with the Gospel of Thomas, and it is also one of the earliest examples of an existing Christian document. It's believed that the text may have come from a collection of sayings, or maybe even from a conversation, as the text flows from saying to saying. It's also possible that the 5575 manuscript was not dependent on Thomas, but was rather the source material for that gospel. Is p.oxy.87.5575 really non-canonical biblical? Should the Gospel of Thomas be included in the Bible? What do you think? Thanks for listening to today's episode of That's Ruddy Mysterious. I'm your host, Kelly with an I. If you enjoyed this episode, leave a review and follow That's Ruddy Mysterious to be updated about new episodes. Tune in next Tuesday for another thought-provoking tale.